Here is a solenoid operated pneumatic valve. You'll notice two important characteristics on the nameplate. One, this is a two position, five port, double solenoid operated valve with a detent. Two, notice the manufacturer's whimsical misspelling of the term pneumatics. Very cute. This valve's cuteness has been noted. One might be taken aback by two solenoids for a two position valve. Ordinarily, one sees a two position valve controlled by a single solenoid and a spring offset to one of the positions when the solenoid is de energized. Not this valve. This particular valve makes use of the solenoid to push the valve into one position, and then the detent holds it in this place until the next time the opposite solenoid is energized, pushing the spool out of place. The detent then keeps the valve in this position, and the process can repeat itself as needed. This particular valve can be thought of as a solenoid-operated valve that isn't electrically held, but rather mechanically held. The solenoid moves it into the new position, and then the detent takes it from there. The loss of electrical power does not see the valve move to its deactivated state. Safety considerations must be taken into account when using detented valves. Applications for a detented solenoid-operated valve include clamping a lifted object. If electrical power is lost, the detented valve ensures that the object remains clamped and doesn't drop to the floor and shatter into a million sharp pieces. When pushed into this position by this solenoid, pressurized airflow is routed to A and B is routed to the B exhaust. The detent keeps it here until such time that the solenoid pushes it into this position where pressurized airflow is routed to B and A is routed to the A exhaust. The solenoids feature a recessed means of manually actuating each push pin on either side. When manually actuated, one can feel the valve shift position. The base plate features stamped port markings obscured by generations of accumulated sawdust. The electrical connections to the two coils poke out the back. If these wires weren't labeled, you could pop the top off the valve to see which connection goes to which coil. Notice A is stamped on the right, and B is stamped on the left. We can pop off the solenoid covers. Notice the gasket and the protruding portion of the spool. When we remove the solenoid from the cover, we see the coil and the extended armature. When energized, the armature is pulled into the coil and this armature directly pushes the protruding portion of the spool. We can remove the spool from the valve. Notice the lands and valleys that selectively open or block port connections inside the valve when moved to a new position. Notice the detent used to keep the spool in the preferred position until actuated by the opposite solenoid. Once we remove the other solenoid, we can take a quick peek down the barrel of the valve body. The perforations are the incoming and outgoing air ports selectively opened and closed by the lands and valleys of the solenoid shifted spool. Now that we've got a general understanding of a solenoid operated valve, Let's now discuss some general specifications of coils and solenoid operated valves and highlight some points of interest before we close up shop. A disclaimer before we continue. Always consult the manufacturer's data sheet for a specific solenoid operated valve of interest. Do not for a moment assume all solenoid operated valves operate in this manner. The specifications presented herein are universal in nature. A thick, tangled jungle of manufacturer differences exist especially for older solenoid operated valves. First, let's talk about the coil of the solenoid operated valve. Similar terminology was employed for both the contactors and control relays lectures when discussing the coil, so this might be a review if you've already watched these lectures. First, the coil rated voltage must be matched to that of the control circuit voltage. A programmable logic controller with a 24 volt DC output cannot operate the coil of a solenoid operated valve intended to operate on 120 volts AC. Either one must use a programmable logic controller capable of supplying 120 volts AC output to directly operate the coil or find a means of translating these two different voltage levels and flavors. Typically such interaction occurs inside an interposing relay, basically a device that translates one magnitude of input to a different level of output. We'll discuss both programmable logic controllers and interposing relays in later lectures. In addition to rated voltage, coils have a pickup, hold in, and drop out voltage. Pickup voltage is the minimum amount of voltage necessary to overcome the at rest resistance of the armature and spool or poppet. The hold in voltage 
is the minimum voltage necessary for the coil to maintain the armature in the activated position once it has been activated. As can be expected, the hold-in voltage to maintain a position is a little less than the pickup voltage necessary to initiate movement to a new position. Finally, the dropout voltage is the amount of voltage below which the coil just returns the valve to the deactivated state. Coils with both the same AC and DC voltage ratings are not normally interchangeable. Those with an understanding of reactance realize a coil of wire presents both a resistive and inductive impedance to AC voltage, whereas DC voltage sees only the resistive portion. Current draw for the same coil operated at AC versus DC voltages, even of the same magnitude, will be astoundingly different. Additionally, an AC coil experiences an inrush current upon being energized in comparison to that of its sealed in or stable value. The armature must be completely pulled into the coil to reach the sealed in state. A kinked spool resisting movement might damage the coil due to excessive current draw. In addition to these specifications, a coil manufacturer might also indicate a duty cycle under which the coil will operate as expected, over which excessive heat and damage may result. Let's move on to discuss the solenoid operated valve and its interaction with the coil. If your application calls for shifting a valve under full flow and pressure conditions, it is important to review the shift limit characteristics for the chosen flow paths to ensure the coil has enough force to shift the spool. It is for this reason that manufacturers ordinarily offer various spools and coils to maximize the flow and pressure capacities for the desired flow function. The solenoid operated valve, like other hydraulic valves, typically have a rated flow and a maximum inlet pressure. The rated flow is a quick snapshot of this valve's performance at that flow rate. If you wanted to dive deeper into the valve's performance at flow rates other than the rated flow, you'd ordinarily consult the pressure drop for different flow rates performance curve or the operating limits performance curve. The pressure drop for different flow rates performance curve shows the typical restriction pressure drop created by the valve at different flow rates. Ordinarily, the pressure drop across the valve should be between the two curves. If you're observing different values, the valve is obstructed, silted over, or otherwise damaged. The operating limits performance curve tells you the maximum inlet pressure actually varies as flow rate changes. The snapshot presented by the rated flow and maximum inlet pressure is a point on this curve. Additionally, valve specifications typically describe the amount of leakage at a certain viscosity and pressure conditions with the understanding that fluid with lower viscosity, i.e. thinner fluid, will leak more, as will higher pressure applications. Valve specifications typically state the fluid compatibility, viscosity, and level of filtration required for proper operation. The valve seals must be assessed for compatibility with the temperature and fluid being used in your application. Most manufacturers offer a choice of nitrile, fluorocarbon, or special purpose seals. Finally, physical, connection, and cavity dimensions of the valve are often included in manufacturer's data sheets. Before we bring this lecture to a close, let us discuss special purpose solenoid operated valves with notable differences between the ones I used as examples. The solenoid operated valves we examined earlier were discrete in nature and that there was a clear transition from full on to full off position or vice versa. There also exist variable solenoid valves that not only initiate movement in one direction or another, but also control flow by varying the orifice size through the valve in proportion to supplied control current. A proportional valve uses a coil supplied with not the digital presence or absence of full voltage, but rather a smoothly variable analog electrical control signal that varies position of the spool in proportion to the control signal. No signal means no movement of the spool. Full signal means full movement of the spool. Half signal means half movement of the spool. The infinitely variable signal allows the valve to be placed in an infinite number of intermediate positions. The restriction presented by the partially positioned spool acts almost like a flow control valve and directly affects the actuation speed of the actuator. Feedback transducers based off flow sensors or actuator position can be used to accurately control the desired quantity. A servo valve is something very similar to a proportional valve. However, it uses something called a force motor to indirectly position the spool. 
Servo valves normally have a more linear force and current relationship than a regular proportional valve and can be used for high performance closed loop control of actuator speed or position applications. We'll discuss variable solenoid operated valves like proportional and servo valves in later lectures. Finally, consider something called a piggyback valve. A piggyback valve is a solenoid actuated pilot operated directional control valve. Although solenoid operated valves are quick acting, they have limited strength. A piggyback valve is a combination of a small solenoid operated valve used to control the main pilot operated valve. When the main valve needs to be shifted, the small solenoid operated valve shifts pilot pressure to the main valve's pilot operated spool. This allows the main valve to operate at increased system pressure and flow rate. An application for a piggyback valve is one in which the characteristics of an electrically controlled hydraulic system are desired, but excess system pressure and flow rate preclude the use of direct acting solenoid operated valves. This wraps up our brief introduction to the solenoid operated valve. We'll be making use of this device in later lectures as the principal interaction point between the electrical control and hydraulic power aspects of an electrically controlled hydraulic system. In conclusion, this lecture took a brief look at the solenoid operated valve. We identified the purpose and function of the solenoid, the coil, and the valve on both electrical and hydraulic schematics, and disassembled and examined a representative example. Additionally, we discussed coil and valve specifications and construction, and contrasted general purpose solenoid operated valves with detented solenoid operated valves, the piggyback valve, and variable solenoid operated valves like the proportional and servo valve. Remember to review these concepts as often as you need to really drive it home. Imagine how well lab will go if you know what you're doing. Thank you very much for your attention and interest, and we'll see you again during the next lecture of our series. Remember to tell your lazy lab partner about this resource, and be sure to check out the Big Bad Tech channel for additional resources and updates.